Hi, this is a tutorial on the free Windows Live Photo Gallery and Photo Editing software program. So I'm going to click on the icon conveniently located on my desktop here. Open up Windows Live Photo Gallery and you might get a little pop-up that says would you like to use Windows Live to open up uh, these types of files XR it doesn't really matter just click uh, don't show me don't bug me anymore uh, click yes and hopefully it won't bug you anymore about that so the Windows Live photo gallery is exactly that it, it is a photo gallery of all the pictures within your computer and these by the way are video files and it will um, show display them as well but we can't edit those within this program on the start screen you see a whole bunch of options up here um, we're going to disregard that completely for now it's just daunting uh, you look in and you want to learn all this stuff I encourage you just to put it out of your mind and focus on uh, the important stuff that I'm going to show you today so here's a list of our folders where our pictures are on our computer and right now the October 2013 folder is highlighted showing the pictures and videos within that folder and as you'll notice you'll see September 2013 uh, listed as well uh, automatically the program will remember or record when your pictures were taken I put all these pictures um, in the October folder just because they were taken within days of each other so not really a big deal to remember but it is a handy thing if you want to look back and see when those pictures you had were taken okay moving on to the editing portion of editing portion of things um, what you do is you pick a picture and uh, I like to just start with the first one and you double click it opens up full screen so now we can see that better and we can work with it individually now at the top our options are different so previous and next that's referring to going to the different pictures within your gallery we can rotate the picture left and right and if we really don't like the picture we can just delete it completely we can make a copy of the picture just in case you wanted to maybe save the original picture uh, before it was edited and um, and uh, also have uh, an edited copy as well tagging won't even talk about it it's not um, uh, it's an advanced thing um, so I'm gonna just move on to the important easy to use stuff for editing our pictures and this little area right here generally is where we're gonna work so here's our photo and this is the do it all super easy auto adjust button and if we click that picture it automatically does all the stuff it crops it it rotates it, it adjusts the color and the saturation and the, our exposure and such um, but um, often it, it doesn't really do a great job um, so if we don't like what it's done we can go all the way up here to the undo button and click that and yeah I didn't really like what it, it did if I wanted to just see compare what this picture looks like before and after a bunch of times sometimes I like to do that I'll I'll click the redo undo redo undo just so I get a sense sometimes it's um, it's hard to pick which um, version of the photo was better in this case is in my mind it's pretty easy uh, the original looks a lot better so auto adjust um, by the way underneath uh, some or near some of the icons these pictures are called icons if you didn't know underneath them you'll have words and you'll see a little triangly uh, thing and that means there's other options um, with the auto adjust won't even bother going into the advanced stuff it's not not something I I work with if it doesn't work right out of the box if it doesn't make my picture beautiful right away I move on to the more manual settings and do it myself crop if I click crop it's going it's going to um, 
crop the picture based on you know what it thinks is the best um, uh, cropping. We can, as you can see, the mouse. And we'll look at the mouse. It looks like a standard little pointer. When we move over the picture, it um, becomes these little crosshairs. And if I click and hold, I can drag the crop box anywhere around the screen. You will also notice that there's little squares on the middle of the top and the corners, middle of the side, middle of the bottom. Those would allow me to adjust the crop shape and size as well. So you move your mouse over very slowly. Some people just try to do it too quick and get frustrated. You move your mouse over very slowly to the little square until your mouse changes and just relax and hold it and press gently on the left button of your mouse hold it and you can drag it and let go when you move your mouse into the middle you'll notice that the mouse changes to these crosshairs and if you click it's not going to change the shape it's going to allow you to move the crop box now as I said, with the auto adjust, there's a little little words with a little drop down. If I click that for the crop, it is kind of handy. I go to proportion, <coughs> excuse me, and it's set to custom. If I wanted to create or uh, maintain the original proportion of the picture, um, the shape of it, I would click original, and as you can see, it has adjusted to that. So now. There's no little uh, square in the middle or on the sides or the bottom, just in the corners, which would allow me to change the size of it, but not the shape. Notice how it's just going bigger and smaller, but not the shape is not changing. We can also go into the other options of proportion, and we can change it to special customized um, shapes, 8.5 by 11, 4 by 6, square, widescreen for widescreen TV viewing if we wish of course uh, that's still a crop so you're gonna you're gonna cut out um, uh, portions of your picture regardless now if we don't like how that is then we can just click proportion go back to original so if we like the crop we can leave it or if we don't like it, yeah, well, let's have a look at it. There we go. We cropped it, and uh, yeah, no, I don't like it. So what we can do is we can go up to the undo button, and it goes back to the original. Okay, so we've talked enough about the crop for now. We're going to move on. Red eye, of course, if you have uh, people in your picture and they have some red eye this is a one little click option it will automatically correct red eye for you quite handy we don't need to talk about that much anymore retouching removes minor imperfections marks and blemishes from your photos straighten so if you took a picture and it, it kinda turned out crooked you could click this one step automatic straighten button and it would try to straighten your picture but uh, in this case it's not really uh, it didn't really do much because uh, the picture is fairly straight out as it is so I am going to back up to undo click on that and get back to the original we have noise reduction so if your picture is grainy or something you can uh, adjust that um, I don't deal with that a whole lot. I think if the picture is really terribly grainy, any of the automatic smoothing and stuff it can do for me it doesn't really look that good. So at that point, I, I pretty much delete the picture. Color. I can click this, and it will automatically adjust the color for me. I can look at it and go, yeah, that was good, or no, that's not good. If I don't like it, I can click the Undo button up here. Uh, also, 
I can go back to revert to the original and click that and the picture reverts to the original. Just like crop with the little arrow thingy and auto adjust color has a little triangle arrow thingy there too. If we click on it, it gives us a handy little box of uh, options and it, if we hover our mouse over it we can preview what it would look like if we clicked one of these and say we can see which one might actually enhance the photo the way we want it. To be honest um, some of them don't yeah this one is not bad at all. We could click that and it will stay. I'm going to go up to undo back to the original. Yeah, it's a little yellowed out. I, I did actually like what that did for me. So again, click the little arrow, find the option we want. If we don't click on it, it won't stay. It'll go back to the original. So we have to just click on that and it will stay. If we decide we don't want to maintain those changes, then just move your mouse over to the side away from the picture, away from those options, and just click. And that box goes away. Exposure, same thing. If we just click over here, as opposed to this little triangle, then it will automatically do an exposure adjustment on the picture. It didn't do a whole lot, Sometimes uh, there's just not a lot to do, so you don't see major changes. Other times it's um, night and day, literally. So I'm going to just undo that, any change that was made, just for demonstration purposes. Click the arrow, and again, here's a box of exposure options, and I can highlight or hover my mouse over them and see what it would do to my picture. If I wanted to keep one of these options, I would click on it and it would stay. And if I don't, I move my mouse over to the side, click there, and it goes back to the way it was. We can also go into the fine tune where I find I spend a lot of time with. If I click on fine-tune. Right now there's just the picture as we can see. I'll move my mouse a little slower. I don't want to make you dizzy. But if I click on fine-tune now the picture moves over to the side just a little bit and we have this batch of extra options show up on the side. And this is where we can do some manual adjustments to the exposure, to the color, to the straighten the photo and, and adjust the detail. Pick the first option, adjust exposure. If we move our mouse over top of it and we click it, we get a list of sub options. Brightness, contrast, shadows, and highlights. Now if I click and hold this, we'll call it a button, it is a slider button and I drag one way the picture will get either darker or lighter in this case that's darker and lighter I don't know if you can actually see that edit um, let me go down to another handy button this is the zoom button and there's another slider it is full size now and we can zoom in there and you probably saw that picture pop in and zoom in on that side of the picture. Handy little thing if you want to see fine detail of your picture and this button would get it back to the original size so you would see the full picture on your screen. Start back up to brightness. If I adjust the slider we can see that it gets darker and really washed out if I do that. I move it back to the middle. If I want to get it to um, the original, I can click revert to original um, and it will, it will erase all. If I did a whole bunch of edits, it would erase all of them and get back to the original. Or if I just want to move one step back, if there was just one adjustment I did like that, 
and I say no, no, that's kind of terrible. So I can go up to the undo button and just undo that one adjustment. So as you can see, the slider went back to the middle uh, where it was over here, and of course the picture um, brightness is, is uh, reverted to its uh, its uh, the state that it was before I made the adjustment. So in contrast, if we uh, adjust that, it it um, can really enhance the contrast of the photo. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not. In this case, it is actually reasonably good. I don't, I don't uh, often get a lot of luck with the contrast changes, but where I find myself doing a lot of work with is in the uh, the shadows section. If um, if there's some dark areas, so let's look at um, kind of leave it at uh, the original. If there's some dark areas over here or something in a photo, um, and I want to see that detail, move up to the shadows, and it will uh, I'll drag it up brighter, and it will actually um, allow me to see the detail within that darker area. Um, too much of a good thing is, is not good because it can make everything else washed out, but but um, sometimes it, it works out very well. In this case, not too bad. If I want to reduce the overall brightness of the picture, I can darken it like that, but then it will darken both the highlight areas, the bright areas, and the shadow areas. So let, let me just undo that twice. Um, so the brightness is original. Now if I want to bring down just the highlighted areas and keep the brightness of the shadowed areas there, shadow is high so I can see the areas of the shadow and I bring the highlights down and bring them down quite a ways and now the sky is much bluer. I can still see what's in the shadowed area and everything doesn't look as washed out as it was just a moment ago. And if I want to just revert to original, I click on that, and here we are again. And that's the uh, manual um, adjust, uh, exposure adjustments. If I double click on the heading, the options close. I can go down to the color options and click on that. And now we have color temperature. And that can change it from uh, you know temperature when they refer to that it's it kind of makes it more bluey in the colder area or uh, more red or yellow in the in the hot area Revert to original tint green and pink does a lot of green and pink revert to original saturation this is where I often uh, um, l like to play with uh, this is what I I use it can really make your picture a lot more rich. The colors here um, all of a sudden become a lot, um, a lot brighter, less washed out. Now, straighten photo. This is a manual version of straightening the photo. You get a grid on the picture, and if you uh, let's see, I'm going to zoom in on this just so you can kind of see what happens off to the side there. So if I drag this slider, you can see that it tilts the picture, and it actually crops it too, because if it, if it didn't, if it didn't cut off parts of it, this side wouldn't be straight anymore. Um, so uh, when you do a straighten, you're going to get, uh, you're going to lose some of the picture because it has to crop the photo to, to do the straightening effect. Some other options to look at here. These uh, rotate the picture right and left. Delete the picture. Move to the next picture. Back again. Those are the same options, by the way, as what we have right here. If you click Next, or if you go up and click Close File, it will automatically save the changes to your picture. This area here are some uh, quick effects. And so if you highlight over one, you'll see that it says black and white, yeah, and it's going to make your picture black and white. Sepia tone. I'm not sure why anybody would do that one. Well, that's not bad. Um, anyways, uh, 
so if you just highlight you can see a quick preview of what this will do to your picture if you want to keep it make it permanent you click on it so we've covered a lot of this stuff if we want to uh, generally what I'll do is I'll I'll pull up my picture I'll edit it I don't spend a lot of time on it you know I'm I'm in and out quick because there's a lot of pictures to edit if it needs major enhancement it's not worth doing because as I said it just takes too long so so I, I do some quick edits I move on to the next one okay yeah now I can I can kinda see I go back to this one I can kinda see what I need to do with this I start to get an idea of that I can try the auto adjust and see yeah no that didn't work very well uh, I can crop it. No, we don't. We don't really need to crop that so much. Um, I know I'm going to go into the fine tune options. We're going to click on exposure. I can see that we need to reduce the highlights quite a bit, and uh, and that's helping already. And click on adjust colors. I think I'm going to pop up the saturation on that. That's made it a lot brighter. If I go back to the original, you can see how it's washed out again. And that's about all I need to do. I click on the next picture, it saves it, and uh, <laughs> and away we go. So, um, yep, I got my options here. Oh yeah, that's, there's way too much glare on, on my shiny legs. So I drop that down, but sometimes it works well, sometimes... Um, Sometimes it doesn't look good at all. This picture is just not a great picture in general. I, I get a sense very quickly that, um, yeah, whatever I do really isn't worth a darn. So um, I revert to original, and I move on to a, a picture that is actually worth uh, maybe editing. Um, I was trying to get an idea, a different kind of perspective. Um, this is a story of my life, a different kind of perspective. Let's try this one and see what happens. Yeah, that, that worked. That's working a little bit better. Um, and we're going to drop the brightness a bit on it. No, that's, that's not helping much. Shadows. Mm, that's okay. Saturation. Whoa, now I have a beautiful golden tan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really not liking it so much. So again, uh, revert to original. <coughs> here's one I, I think that we can work with um, we got some dark 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 area here that looks like it's a big drop off if we go over to shadows and we brighten that up all of a sudden hey there's a forest um, but we want to take some of the glare off the highlights the areas where the sun was shining so we'll, um, we'll hit uh, I was going to do brightness but let's just go straight to highlights Drop that down a bit. Yeah, that's I, th you know, maybe not uh, a great shot, but a better shot. And the saturation, we'll just add a little bit more color so it's not as washed out. And there, that's that's not bad. Let's just for fun, let's revert to original and see what uh, happens. I. I think that improved it. I don't. I don't. Uh, again, not a, a wonderful shot, but it did make it better. And uh, there you go. So don't spend a ton of time on on your your crappy shots. Uh, you can you can enhance some pretty well. Let's drop the the glare off on that quite a bit. We're gonna even drop the exposure. Uh, excuse me, the brightness. Bring up shadows. Eh, no, that's not worth a darn we can close the file that's not deleting the file uh, what that would do is get us back to the gallery and it actually shows us the the picture you can see that um, that's blue that's the one that we were just working on so we <coughs> it will help us remember our spot excuse me clearing my throat a little bit of a frog in there at the moment okay so um, we could click on any one of these pictures that we want to deal with specifically or we can go back to the one we were just at double click on it it opens up at its own window we can scroll through our list of pictures and edit them pretty quickly try and auto adjust every once in a while and say yeah that worked or that's no good again the auto adjust sometimes it's just amazing I, I I usually click on it just to see what happens 
and sometimes boom done and I've, I've wasted no more than five seconds on a photo other times it doesn't work so then I just go to undo and I start doing the manual uh, adjustments of things let's look at this one this one's a little washed out see if I can make it any better that actually helped pretty good yeah that's um, that's not bad at all so highlights it was too shiny in spots there's no real shadow to bring up no dark spots that I'm too concerned about um, it's still a little washed out so let's go to adjust color um, most of the time I just head right down to the saturation and I bring that up a bit and it's it's enhanced the color but I don't know if you can see the before and after but let's I'm going to drag this over so we can see it right here but if I change the saturation you can see um, that it's, it's washed out a little bit what do you think? Well, that's personal preference you can play with all these settings you can revert to original or you can close the file and save your changes revert whoa there is a change yeah uh, we certainly uh, or I certainly enhanced that with uh, with my changes yeah that's a lot better shot just by doing that so we're gonna s click next to see the next picture and again that will save our changes that's a, a good example of the changes that can be uh, affected with your very basic Windows Live photo gallery photo editing software package. I think that's about it. Uh, it's your turn to start playing with your photos. Again, uh, it sure is a lot more fun to be riding around on this little bicycle or whatever you do and, and being out there and, and taking some beautiful shots as opposed to spending hours and hours and hours um, correcting uh, all five million pictures that you're going to take in your digital lifetime. Nonetheless, now you know how to do it if you need to. Thanks for watching. Please comment below if you have something, any questions, or you just want to say, hey, nice job, Chris. Uh, please uh, put that down there before. Click like if you could. Um, that helps me a little bit. And, uh, and share it with your friends. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.